Hey folks, welcome back to Sideshow TV. We have a special treat for you this time. Our good friends from ADI are here to show you a slew of new pieces we've been working on. Very exciting stuff. Hey everybody, it's Tom and Alec from ADI. We're here to tell you about our exciting collaboration with Sideshow Collectibles. When uh, Paul Anderson first approached us to create the creature effects for AVP1, uh, he wanted us to do some additional designs of Predator characters, things that we hadn't seen before. So we did about 20, 25 different uh, face masks designs, and these were his three favorites right here, uh, Scar, Chopper, and Celtic. These are what Paul named them. This one is actually based on a uh, mask that Stan Winston Studios did for the second Predator film. Chopper, it was a completely new design, uh, and what we were going for here was a kind of a layered, armored look, something that had a little bit more dynamic flow to it, perhaps, just to kind of break up the broad surface area. You'll also notice that the little metal pings are more reticulating so that they pick the light up. This is Scar, uh, which is based on the classic Predator design of the mask from the first film. It is a great design. We don't want to change anything that's working and is as iconic as the original mask was. What is different is that in the film, uh, the character uh, bloods himself. He takes a finger of an alien and scars his face mask with this symbol of an alien. It's kind of an abstract hieroglyph. This too has the sighting laser lights up, so it's an exact replica of what we made uh, for the film. The one on the end is the Predator from AVPR. This was a redesign uh, based on this original look, but in working with Greg and Colin Strauss, the directors, they were very interested in getting something much more angular than the original. The idea being that perhaps this is a, a more youthful, younger Predator, and this was the older kind of veteran of many wars, many campaigns, and his face mask would reflect the, the organic face of the creature that's underneath it. So therefore you have a lot more angles and a lot more scarring and uh, all these uh, hieroglyphs and, and runes are carved into the mask to show that his victories as spelled out in the predator language. He's also embedded uh, claws or teeth from some alien creature that he's killed in some previous adventure. Now, even though uh, these were originally created for AVP-1 and these were created for AVP-R, uh, all four of the masks did appear in AVP-R. We had additional characters of uh, Predators at the beginning of the film, as well as a scene where the Predator goes to his armory and there's a wall full of masks. So these uh, masks also made an appearance in, in AVP-R as well as AVP. They're all museum quality. They're a nice uh, heavy weight to them. Uh, they're all mounted on a stand that allows you to either set them on a desk or to mount them on a wall. Together, I think they represent the full evolution of the face mask of the Predator. From Amalgamated Dynamics Incorporated, ADI, and Sideshow Collectibles, this is the Predator Mask Collection. The weaponry that the Predator carries is obviously very important uh, to uh, the, the success of the films. And when we were approached to do the creature effects uh, for the Predator, we thought it would be a great opportunity to, to kind of give a revamp to some of the, the weapons. And so what we did was to, within the style of, of the Predator technology, we created uh, a couple of different weapons. This is the ceremonial dagger. And this is a beautiful piece. You can see that all the sculptural work and the handle is completely accurate to what we did for the film. And the, the beautiful tones of golds and blues kind of indicate that while this is a functional fighting weapon, it's also something that the Predator carries with a certain amount of pride. And in the film, he uses this to field dress an alien. We gave it these, this double-bladed look with the uh, barbs on either side. It also hangs on this really cool uh, stand as well. The thing I love about these is that, is that they have a, a, a weight to them that makes them feel like real weapons. The spear uh, was based on the look from the original Predator film, but we were able to, this time, to streamline it a little bit so it's a little more elegant looking. And in the film, of course, the Predator grips it like this, presses this button, and it extends via digital magic. This one is in its compressed state, 
but it's a gorgeous replica of what we did. Again, you can see all of the metal tones. We used copper and gold and bronze tones. There's some blues in here as well. Everything that makes it look like real metal on film. The stand here is, uh, can be used as a desktop or as a wall mount, but there are a couple of beautiful pieces from ADI and Sideshow Collectibles. This is another beautiful, impressive piece of the Alien 3 collection. This is the Queen Facehugger. And this is a piece that fans really didn't get to see in the film because the entire sequence in which it played was cut. This was the idea of having a heavily armored, much more powerful, scary looking facehugger that would be delivering the seed of the Queen into its intended victim. Uh, ultimately, when the scene was cut, so was the creature from the film. Although I believe there is an element now, if you watch the extended scenes, uh, the additional footage, you do get to see a character pick this creature up by its tail. But the beauty of it was that we were able to add the translucent webbing, uh, the big armor shell, the much more uh, heavily armored tail, and trying to take something that is already a, a very fearsome creature to start with and amp it up just a little bit more. Uh, again, another beautiful piece uh, from Sideshow Collectibles and Amalgamated Dynamics. This is another piece from the Alien 3 collection. This is the Fetal Queen Maquette. Originally, it started out as a puppet that was seen in the interior of Ripley's body scan when we find out she actually has an alien creature growing inside her. For that, we built a urethane copy that we could puppeteer with rods, and inside its chest we had a little tiny beating heart so we could actually tell that the creature was alive. Once that was completed and they started the ad campaign, we were asked to generate another copy so that this image became the main image on the theatrical one sheet from the original release of the film. Once we got connected with Sideshow Collectibles, we were asked to do the other side, so it now exists as a complete turnaround, full 3D model of that creature. It comes with a base with a very powerful magnet so you can lock it on, you don't have to worry about falling off your desk. Uh, but it's another beautiful piece through Amalgamated Dynamics and Sideshow Collectibles. This huge piece is from AVPR, and I'm actually getting a little bit of a retro neck ache standing this close to it because in the movie I was inside the original version of this thing. Um, as big as this is, I still think it's probably not quite as heavy as the head I had to wear. But everything is generated from the original mold, so this is an exact one-to-one -one scale replica of what you would have seen on the set had you been lucky enough to be up there in Vancouver with this. The head has a frosted translucent shell over it through which you can see the skull of the predator impact of this strange mix of DNA, as well as the predator dreadlocks. Then the alien aspects are the overall shape and the size and the length of the head, and as well as the color patterns. We combined both the predator and the alien color patterns to arrive at this final look, which was quite dynamic on screen. This is probably the biggest piece of the whole AVPR collection, courtesy of Sideshow Collectibles and Amalgamated Dynamics. I can remember when I started in the industry, started working in studios, and one of the things that fascinated me most was how much great stuff doesn't make it to the screen. So we were very thrilled when Sideshow uh, asked us to, to, if they could make replicas of our design maquettes. These are a couple of design maquettes that we did for the Pred Alien. Working with the directors and with the executives at Fox, uh, we came up with many different looks. Part of the challenge was how much predator, how much alien is it? And uh, our thought was that essentially an alien, not a predator, it's a, but it has taken on host characteristics. So uh, this maquette in particular was one of our favorites. You can see the elongated head of the alien, but also the mandibles of Predator. Uh, we tried to work in some of the iridescent tones of the queen alien as well. One of our favorite elements of this was these quills off the back. We wanted to pay homage to the dreadlocks of the Predator without actually being dreadlocks. It's a beautiful and very elegant design, we think. The length of the neck is very pleasing in its uh, proportions. It almost reminds us uh, a little bit of the bust of Queen Nefertiti from ancient Egypt as well. This beautiful piece is one that we created about a year and a half before the uh, AVP was greenlit. 
It was kind of a show of enthusiasm. We, we couldn't not create a Pred Alien. We were very excited to hear that there was going to be one in the script. So we got together with the team at ADI and came up with this design. And this was putting a little bit more emphasis on the Predator. You'll see that the musculature is more humanoid, uh, like a Predator, and the coloring is also a little bit more Predator-like. We did also have the Predator mandibles uh, blended onto an alien head. Uh, you'll see, uh, again, trying to work out the dreadlocks in a less obvious way, uh, where they're almost kind of tentacle-like, textureless. But it's a, it's a gorgeous piece, and, and we're excited uh, that uh, Sideshow has put both of these uh, pieces together for the collectors. Well now, that was quite a lineup. Keep an eye on the site for more details. But until next time, this is Rex Darkly, video aficionado, signing off. <laughs>